What is up, everybody? Ted here with Bodies and Wicks. Uh, I'm trying to do this new thing to where basically it's Bodies and Wicks bits to where I'm going to try to focus on these a lot quicker. Um, that way you can try to get a lot more out of it in the least amount of time. All right, so what I want to do is I want to tell you that I am a smart money theorist. Um, I don't believe in trend lines, don't believe in... Uh, geometry, yeah, all the jumbo, uh, X, A, Y, B, whatever it is, your harmonics, none of that crap, none of that stuff works, okay? Um, what does work is the algorithm and the algorithm that is in place, and uh, it's definitely showing itself in, in Bitcoin, and I want to show you. So, um, let's just go ahead and head on over to the chart so I've got it on the monthly <clears throat> so as you can see I'm gonna take myself out of this so you can actually see um, my so you can not see myself actually um, and uh, bring back the, uh, the outline there we go and so if we uh, take a it's about, as, about as close as a look as we can get on this so um there's a small little fair value gap here right and that's usually what kind of determines um what price is can or can do if it, it's going to hit it bounce off of it or you know generally especially if it's going to be bearish or bullish it'll give you that sign um considering it, the monthly went straight through this um, that gave us a pretty good sign that we were going to see bearish conditions. Um, however, if we go to the hourly and we look at that same condition, um, I, I, I want to see what happened at that, at that spot. Yeah, as you can see, it just went directly through it. Well, it be well, yeah, well no, kind of gave a little bounce off of it at first, which is a good thing. And then after we made our three drives to the top, after that, it came down to it. <clears throat> I want to take a look inside of it and see what happened. It did get to the bottom of it. Usually that's not a good sign. You usually want to see it get to the top of it and bounce out. <clears throat> and it did, actually. It got to the top of it, bounced out, but not much farther, it looks like. There may have been something from over on this side. Look, there was a lot of liquidity underneath here. So it took out a lot of liquidity underneath here. So considering that there was liquidity underneath here, it probably knew that. <coughs> uh, a lot of people um, buying around this area, thinking that 40, I mean, anywhere between 45 and 40,000 was going to be a safe place considering we just hit 65,000. Um, so it starts trying to find those those buy limits, those buy limits that are lower. As you can sell, as you can see, it doesn't want to break this this fair value gap from the monthly. It just it doesn't want to break it. It wants to stay above it. So you you can t you can see there was somewhat bullish conditions, but there was something bearish inside of there that made it eventually. And then as soon as it dropped out, what did it do? It just dropped out. And the next thing it does is boom, it hits the next monthly fair value gap. <clears throat> so since it hits the next mon monthly fair value gap, comes out, what does it do the next time? Boom, hits it. All right, bounces out. And we're getting close to hitting it again. So, uh... As you can see, those are the conditions that this has brought us to, right? So, and even if we go to like something like the weekly, um, we can probably even see fair value gaps in there. Here, it just looks like it's, and this, and this is what was strange to all of us is that it didn't get below, um, cause it, even though it did have that monthly one, these, all these got below it, but they pushed out like a freaking rocket, right? So, um, that was, you know, the kind of the, the catalyst of 
that drivings you know part out of that that monthly fair value gap and uh, that's what surprised me too was you know it hung down here long enough but after it hung down here long enough it was just like i'm out of here um so i'm not for sure if we'll see the same thing here um usually once you see it start getting you know lower and lower and lower into it that's usually not a good thing it usually tries to push itself lower until you get to something else um, down here um, you know you see if it does get to this one hopefully we'll see it push out right but the only bad thing is is that once you're on the out at the other side of a fair value gap it's gonna want to push this down so we could see a struggle here in between um, you know somewhere in between you know 20 set late uh, upper 27s lower 29s um, you could see a struggle session in there bouncing back and forth or until it gets all the way down to this area here which is actually the weekly fair value gap so um, because from here, I, I don't see any bear, I don't see any bearish order bl or bullish order blocks at all. So there's nothing I see that's that's gonna say, hey, this is gonna. I mean, here, even then, this wasn't even really a bearish order block. I don't really think this would constitute these three driving out of here would constitute as a bearish order block, meaning that the price should have stopped around this area somewhere around this area and then turned around went back up but it didn't instead got into the fair value gap pushed back out uh got close to this one but actually actually if we think about it it's this one right here look at the very bottom of this one the very bottom of this fair value gap of the weekly um and then started pushing back down the opposite way uh, so now all we got to do is wait to see what's going to happen. Is it going to continue to keep pushing toward this? Or is it going to come inside this and then bounce off? And then once it does that, where is it going to go from there? Well, then you'd have to, you know, continue checking on each, you know, uh, time frame uh, to see what is most likely to happen, to see where the liquidity is. Um, if there is liquidity, like there, there may be a little bit of liquidity above here, so it could reach higher into here. Um, but I'm afraid as soon as it does that, it could be pushed back down. Um, there is liquidity below here as well, which is unfortunate. So it could just push down below here. But it may be a sign that if we could get down, you know, to these lower, you know, 24, 25s, that may be the last of it who knows and we could get out of there um or it could be a thing to where we could see it continue to push its way down just like it did through here and then get all the way down to this last one which ends around 20,000 below 20,000 unfortunately somewhere around 14,000 i don't personally don't think we'll see that um we were way too far ahead uh in the bitcoin game i don't think you know a mini you know I mean, we see this all the time. If you ever pay attention to the Forex game, this is nothing more than just a, a, another, you know, GBP USD type formation or, uh, you know, a, a Swiss franc, uh, you know, Japanese yen formation, something like that. It's just on a larger scale. And unfortunately, a lot of people have money in this. So um, a lot of people are looking at this to see what's going to happen. Um, so you have to use smart money and the algorithms that are in play to know what's going on. You can't just sit here and say, look at this, you know, line that's doing this or whatever. Well, let me take this off of here. You can't just sit here and say, oh, well, look at this trend line. Uh, well, what did that trend line do? Absolutely nothing, right? That was that. Was, that was not a good trend line. It didn't do anything. Uh, or are you trying to? What are you trying to do? Are you, you know, you, everybody's trying to fit so something 
to make a trend line look good you know to make to make it look like oh it's in their favor because you can you can you can switch around as many three three pointed lines as you want and make it look good and you know in your favor but is that really how this operates no it's not how this operates it operates because price is always looking for liquidity and it's looking to balance that's all it's looking to do so as long as you know that price is looking for liquidity if you know what liquidity is, which is liquidity is where all either the, either you have market limit um, or you have buy limits, sell limits that are sitting there waiting in the market, waiting to, you know, to be triggered um, or areas in the market to where people are waiting to go ahead and either push that, you know, especially if you have MT4. Uh, either that you're waiting to to buy the market to to buy the price at that at, at that time, or if you're looking to short it at that time, um, those are the areas um, that you're looking for. And then what smart money is going to do is they're going to take it the opposite way as to what you would think it would do, um, because that, they know that that that's what you're looking for. Because let's say if you had, especially down here. If you have now we have one two if we have a, a triple I mean it w wouldn't be a triple but if we keep forming you know lines that keep you know extending down to here down to here down to here everybody's gonna bet that every time it gets down to there that it's gonna buy and they're gonna make some money going up eventually sell off and you know and it's gonna come back down but at some point it's going to push through at the last minute that you expect it and you're probably going to put a lot of money into it and everybody in the smart money sits the people that have the money that can push this thing around know that and they're going to be able to take your money like no other so be careful with that just know the algorithm uh know you know just just keep your head on the swivel and you know keep an eye on 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 what's going to happen or what could possibly happen then use these fair value gaps as your guide you know these these things are are what are, can show you uh you know where price can land because if price does not you know balance like i said and that's what a fair value gap is it's it's where price has become unbalanced now it can balance later like it has here but that doesn't mean that the algorithm hasn't remembered that area and that it's not going to come back to that area as you can see as it did here and then bounce back out right the algorithm hasn't hit this area yet so who knows we could see it come all the way back down down to here to 25 to 24 right or what you know what we could see is that we could see it very slowly come down touch this and then all of a sudden turn the opposite way right and that's what we could see we don't know so just keep your eye on the swivel um and uh make sure um spend a lot more time studying smart money theory uh less time on your your geometry and stuff like that because that stuff doesn't work guys it doesn't work it, it just it, i've tried it i've been a I've been a trader for over a year. I've done all of the whole, everything a book told me to do uh, between support and resistance and, you know, all that stuff. And support and resistance is subjective, you know. Um, it can change at any moment. Um, and, and just who, who knows what is going to happen with the market because the market is ever-changing. So... Um, just always watch to see, um, you know, where, where price is headed because again, it, it could just, you've seen it do it before, drop it any minute. And then as soon as it gets below something like this, it just stops, you know, or it acts like it's going to get there and it stops and then it pulls back up because you think everybody's buying it. And then all of a sudden it drops again, right? So that's what you got to look for. Okay. Anyways uh like i said i'm trying to do these in short spurts uh i hope that was enough to get your attention and uh you know hopefully gets you to look into some of these things but uh thanks again for watching again my name is ted with bodies and wicks and i shall see you later and remember to keep your pants on